Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for this week's Career Spotlight. I have Christina Linkow here with Swift Health Center, and we are super, super excited to have her. She's going to share a bunch of really great information with you. Uh, so, Christina, if you want to go ahead and get started and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your work and what you do. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me on today. Um, as she said, my name is Christina Lenko, and I am the Sales and Marketing Manager out at the Swift Health Center. Um, if you haven't been out to the Swift Health Center, hopefully when everything is back, um, we, you can come visit me. Uh, we are a city-owned facility. We're kind of out by the interstate. Um, big building with an orange roof, but um, I've been there for over six years now um, as the Marketing Manager, and I would say my day-to-day -day just changes all the time. That is the coolest thing about working in the live event industry. Um, done everything from working on rodeos to weddings, banquets. We've also hosted some pretty amazing concerts out there. Um, and then really cool local events like Uncle Sam Jam and Dairy Fest and some of those um, community family friendly events. So really just a whole spectrum of of cool things that come through our facility. Oh my goodness, no kidding. Do you have a favorite event or a favorite type of event? Oh gosh, um, honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite event, but I have a favorite part of the event is when everybody comes into the building, which I know everybody these days is just really missing, um, is seeing everybody come through the doors and especially in Brookings where um, a lot of people attend a lot of our events and they see each other out and about. Uh, so coming in the doors and getting excited, um, getting their ticket scanned, grabbing food. Um, it's my favorite part of the event, kind of just walking around and feeling that excitement and those cool vibes. Everybody's all excited about whatever event they're coming to see. It's my favorite part. Yes, I'm sure all the energy and the buzz and all of that is so fun. Yes. So tell me a little bit about yourself and where you're from, because you're not originally from Brookings. No, I am not. Um, I am. So we have lived here for about 10 years, but I am originally from Breckenridge, Minnesota. That's my hometown. Um, it's smaller than Brookings, actually. It's like 3,000 people that live in, in Breckenridge, and we don't even have a stoplight in that town. So it's one of those kind of towns. Um, and I actually went to a uh, K-12 uh, elementary through high school, little country school. So I had 10 kids in my graduating class. So oh my really small kind of backstory. So for us, Brookings kind of feels like a big town. I know for some people it's little, but for us, it's almost kind of a, a big, big city. Um, I know, big city, little town, big city feel. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great way to say it. Plus little big town is like one of my favorite bands. So like it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I grew up in Breckenridge and then I went to college um, in Moorhead, Minnesota. There's a college called Concordia College. It's a private university. Um, uh, my dad and my grandma had both gone there. Just seemed like a really good fit for me. I was really, um, I really loved, I love music and was a part of the choral program up there. And um, they had a, some other programs I was really interested in. So spent four years at Concordia and then I spent a summer in Fargo interning with Bobcat Company. Uh, fun fact, their you know, like corporate headquarters is out of West Fargo, North Dakota, which is kind of random. Very cool. I did not know that. Yeah. And they let me drive as the marketing intern. They even let me drive like the skid steer and the <laughs> like, they didn't let me do the excavator, which I really wanted to, but I think they thought, no, marketing intern not for you, but they did let me test drive a skid steer. So, and I can tell you what most Bobcat attachments do. That was one of my random projects um, when I was there. But, oh my gosh, I love yeah. that. Make sure you add that to your resume. That is awesome. <laughs> Sometimes I creep on their website to see if they still have the content that I wrote for them, but that was a hundred years ago. Maybe not quite <laughs> that long, but. So yeah, so then I were, uh, worked there for a summer and then uh, I moved to Brookings when I got hired at Dactronics um, that summer after college. So we've been here ever since. Oh, very cool. And how did you get connected to Dactronics? Were you looking in the Brookings area? Uh, were you looking for a specific position? What did that look like for you? Sure. Okay, so I really love this story. Um, and I think it's really appropriate, especially for college students, because it can be super disheartening finding work like right after college. I was. I was very determined to find a job within my major, within my career path. Um, 
and wasn't really willing to deviate from that too much. So I, I, any job that had marketing in the title within, you know, like four states, I was sending out resume, resume and sending out applications, which if you have done that, that is like a, a whole job um, to really tailor all those letters of applications and your resumes for each of those specific positions. Um, so I had spent that summer when I was working at Bobcat company, um, that was kind of, it was a ticking time clock. Basically, uh, I knew I needed to be done by the end of that summer, continued to send out resumes and just hadn't heard back and hadn't heard back. And I was getting pretty, pretty disheartened. It's, it's not awesome when you don't, when you're not getting any interviews. And so I was talking to someone and I wish I could remember who this person was because I just love the story and I probably should figure out who this person was. <laughs> but I said that I had applied, Bobcat had actually had an internal position that they said uh, nobody, like as interns probably wouldn't qualify for it, but we should interview for it just to get good practice. And turns out, yep, yeah, none of us interns got hired for this job. So I was being, feeling pretty sad about it, telling this person that I didn't get this job, hadn't heard back from any of my applications. And they said, well, who did Bobcat hire? Because wherever that person came from, there's a job opening. And so I LinkedIn creeped this person, found out that they had left Dactronics. And so that started my job search on Dactronics website. They had a job opening. I came down for an interview. And here I am still in Brookings. Oh my goodness. That is kind of a fun story. I love it. I love how you use your detective skills to find the job. That is so funny. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's like very true. And trust me, that job search is tough. I mean, for my field specifically, most positions required like three to five years worth of experience, which, okay, well, if you're coming out of college, like maybe you have a couple years if you did some interning, but just getting in getting your foot in the door to get that experience is tough. So, uh, so yeah, take a look where, where people are coming from, the people that are getting hired, wherever they came from, there's probably a job opening. So that's that, some random advice. No, that is really good advice. That's great. So you are in the field of marketing. How did you become interested in marketing? Did you, were you interested right away in high school? Did you take some classes that sparked your interest? Um, you talked about your internship a little bit. Are there different activities that you really latched on to um, during that time period? What does that, that looked like for you? That's the great question to know, like what kind of sparks your interest in, in your, in your field and your career field. And I will tell you, marketing has really changed. So I would say marketing of, you know, 2021 is quite different than when, you know, I was kind of started dabbling in into it um in the creative arts but i would say i've always kind of been interested in art and being creative and using that side of my mind um and then marketing combines the strategic the logic the planning organization so kind of blending those two together um you know in high school i i, I did a lot of random projects of my own like i i was in 4-h and i did a lot of presentations and um kind of that that pulled out that creative side for me or just even um different visual ways of doing some projects in in high school I remember oh my god sorry this is gonna make me sound super old so whatever i definitely would make like mix cds for my friends and then create cover art um which i'm sure i could dig out somewhere in in the, in the archives but you know, just some of those little things that that were fun. And I think that's probably the most important thing is to lean into what what you find to be fun. Cause not your job doesn't always necessarily have to be about how much money you can make or what's the top ranking job or what brings you notoriety. I think more than anything, long term careers are ones that you should find that speak to your heart and speak to your what what makes it fun. Cause you have to do it every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're really lucky and somehow only have to work a couple days a week, but most of us have to work five days a week at least. Um, so if you're gonna have to do this every day, it really should be fun. And so I think some of that's kind of what drew me into exploring marketing when I went into college was um, just the creative field blending in with business. Um, I had a couple advisors who weren't great um, they are no longer there. And it's not to, not, not that they were bad professors. They just, they were account. I had an accounting advisor my freshman year. 
and he told me I shouldn't be in marketing, but I didn't want to. So good. He thought I should be an he thought I should be an accountant, and he did tell me that accountants would make more money, and the the smarter students are accounting majors. And I said, oh, that was really tough advice to hear as a freshman, and could have really like thrown me off the path. Um, so probably another little nugget of advice is if even like advisors and people who you should be seeking advice from, if they give you advice that that doesn't ring true to you or kind of just it's something in the back of your head says that's just still not me you don't have to listen to them they're not always right and they don't know what goes on in your mind and what goes on in your heart so it's tough though when you're kind of in that that learning phase and in that space of exploring careers to to hear something like that but you yeah. gotta listen you gotta listen to yourself and know know yourself a little bit one piece of advice that people have always told me is if you're loving what you do, you will never work a day in your life just because it doesn't feel like work. And so I feel like that's one thing that's really important and that I've heard um, as you've been sharing a little bit about your story is you're so passionate about what you do and no day looks the same. And, and that creative spark that you get to use and tap into your talents when you are doing your work makes it seem like it's not work. And so you're enjoying it. Uh, which is just something super, super important when you're, when you're in the process of exploring different careers. Um, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit. So we've talked a little bit about your career journey, but now I really want to dive into what is, what does a typical day look like for you? And I know in your role, um, there's probably no such thing as a typical day, but if it was an event day or you're preparing for an event, what does that typically look like for you? Sure. Um, I would say a lot of my work, uh, gets done, uh, really far in advance of the event. Um, as that's my goal anyway. Sometimes it comes down right to the wire, but um, a lot of the what my work ends up being is more a few months out from the event. Um, so I do the promotion and marketing for uh, most of our public facing events or ticketed events that come into the facility. Um, so that's connecting with promoters. So I get to talk with people at like Live Nation um, and Ticketmaster and work with them to get all of the cool graphics and posters and content. And then I um, have the pleasure of working with a lot of our local media, which has been a really cool part of my job. Um, I will tell you when I started at Swiftel Center, I knew about marketing, but I was new to the, to the live event industry and even just like media relations in general. So super cool part of um, what the team allowed me to do was just kind of like grow into that and learn on the fly, which some jobs you really just kind of have to fake it till you make it a little bit. And I've been there six years now, so I can say that. I might not have said that in year one, but I will definitely say after <laughs> six, I didn't think I knew what I was doing for a little while. And that's okay. I I. Like I said, I've been there six years now, so they must have thought I was doing something right. But um, connecting with our local media was super fun. Um, I enjoy that. And um, in a town like Brookings, you know, you see these people out and about, right? So it's cool because you're not only working with them in a professional capacity, but then you're seeing them out and at dinner and and whatever cool things you're you're doing here in town. So yeah, so then that's you know the piece of event promotion. Um, and but I also do a promotion for the facility, uh, which includes some sales campaigns. So trying to bring in some meeting and wedding banquets, um, some of those private events, putting together marketing campaigns that's tailored to those types of planners on a really small budget. I mean, we are not talking about the budgets of the Coca-Colas in the world. Like this is a, this is a shoestring budget. And so it's, it's really, um, a lot of planning and a lot of knowing your knowing your market, knowing what resources um, exist here that are free or that you can um, negotiate a contract with somebody or an arrangement um, to get that message out there. So it's a lot of it's honestly a lot of like networking and kind of relationship building for the mm -hmm. facility. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like you're tapping into a variety of different resources to help you get the word out there. So that networking piece is huge. Um, yeah. That kind of leads me to my next question. Um, what are some of the key characteristics for somebody that's looking at a marketing 
um, degree or maybe it's a marketing uh, position, what are some of those key things that you feel are really important for somebody that has that role? Sure. Um, and there's so many different types of marketing. So when you're thinking about like what characteristics you need to fill that marketing role, I, it, it kind of depends on which vein of marketing you're going into. Um, and then uh, also like what type of company you're going to go into. Um, Cause there are some really big, cool companies that have massive marketing departments and, you know, and each of each individual on the team has their dedicated role. So, you know, you might have five graphic designers that their whole job is really to like sit in those graphic programs and pump out some really amazing visuals and you might have people who are dedicated to copywriting and and so for those type of environments um because i would say when i worked at dac that was probably the closest i've come to working in an environment like that um we had a team i worked for the commercial marketing department and we had a team of web copywriters designers um and all kind of and graphic designers and we kind of came together um to put together campaigns so i would say for those type of environments just really knowing um how to bring your best in your your one skill area to the team and kind of weaving it together and and working really cohesively with with your teammates and you can just build some really cool things that way um but then there's the vein of marketing i would say I kind of fall, have fallen into um, now, which is like a one man band sort of operation where like, I do, you know, PR, um, graphics, I do social media, copywriting, make PowerPoint presentations, I design business cards, like just anything that could be like generally labeled as marketing. Um, or just even broader, like visual identity um, basically is swept under my department. Um, and so I think for, for anybody who kind of falls into that category, um, it's knowing your strengths. So really like knowing, okay, so for me, I really love writing. And so I, I have a lot of projects that are like a lot of really good content is what I focus on. Um, and then finding, finding ways to weave other people in to help you get done what else, the other things you need to get done, you know? So, um, like I said, kind of understanding what your talents are. And of course you kind of have to spread it out a little bit. So you might have to fake it till you make it in a few places. Google could be your best friend. Maybe you don't really know how those design programs work. That's okay. You can teach yourself the, the basics. Um, and so, yeah, I think fake it till you make it a little bit and also like finding people, on your team or in the community or, you know, even within your industry and reaching out and asking for, for some help. That's great advice. Um, our next question has to do with networking and different extracurricular activities. So when you were still in school, you mentioned that you did 4-H and that kind of um, sparked some curiosity into the world of marketing, but were there different um, other extracurricular activities that you were a part of? Uh, maybe while you were still in school and then um, now are there different networking opportunities that you're a part of or volunteer opportunities? Um, what does that look like for you? Sure. Um, um, you know, in college, I think the internship was really huge for me. Um, and I would definitely encourage any student to go out there and try to find an internship that's relatively close to um, the job industry they want to go into. Um, and no matter what project they give you, it's still a good experience. So even if you you are scanning photocopies, it still might lead to that to the ultimate job or to the, that first job. Um, so probably college, that was my, my biggest help with launching my career. Um, but since I moved to Brookings, I think it's been fun to be a part of things within the community. Um, so the chamber has some really amazing organizations and I know that the chamber and the city actually have volunteer positions for students. So even if you're looking to get involved right now, both of those entities have some pretty cool volunteer volunteer positions for students. Um, but you know, when you're young in your career, it never hurts to get out there and network and kind of meet people. Um, especially if you move to a new town, like we did, you know, we didn't know anybody when we moved to Brookings, kind of trying to find, find connections and build friendships or um, build those relationships. Um, I think it's fun to look at what, what exists in the community you're living in and be a part of it. Um, I also really loved being a coach for Girls on the Run. 
And that's just such a different thing than my day to day. So, you know, for me, I kind of wanted to supplement or to fill in my volunteer hours with something that was really just going to be a complete departure from, you know, my job as the marketing manager at Swift Hill Center. Um, so Girls on the Run puts me into our local schools and I get to work with third and fourth grade girls and teach them about being a good friend and learning about their skills and how to love themselves and teaching them how to run. So we have a little physical activity, which is really awesome. I have absolutely loved being a part of that program. So, Oh my goodness. I love that. That is so cool. Yeah. And like for me, like I said, it was just, I wanted something that was going to be different, you know, so marketing sometimes, unfortunately, is a lot of like screen time. And so I kind of wanted to get something um, that was a little bit more 3D. So, you know, running and getting out there and, you know, running in the, in, sometimes in the fall can be like kind of cold. So gets you out and breathing the fresh air. Refreshes you. Yeah. Oh, that's it so is. fantastic. I love it that. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, those are kind of activities that I have really enjoyed. Um, it's also important to remember that you are, you know, you only have so many hours in the day. And so if you also just want to take some time to just like be your own person and just, you know, explore some skills on your own, it doesn't always have to be volunteer. Although there's lots of amazing volunteer opportunities, but like, let's say you want to learn how to take photos. Um, pick up a camera and go do that. I kind of did that too. And it was a way for me to meet people when I moved to Brookings. And now I kind of have a little like side hustle photography business that is really fun. And again, very different than my, you know, Swift Shell tasks. So, mm -hmm. and I Sometimes. love that you, I love that you hone into your interests and, and things that really excite you. And that's kind of how you refresh yourself. I think that is so good and super important advice to share with individuals. Um, that you you can still have your job, but you can still have fun outside of your job and do some different volunteer activities or like you said, the photography. Uh, that's that's really awesome. Well, ultimately, so you only have so many hours in your day and in your week, and if you really want to get woo woo in your life, so I mean, you you kind of at some point. I know college is like really kind of drills it in, like you know everything kind of has to have an outcome. Um, and I I know I was super focused on that in college. I was I was probably a super nerd and um, really wanted to make sure that every class I took was very meaningful. And so my, you know, now I'm out of college and have had a little more time to breathe and just reflect and try to pick some activities that, you know, maybe there'll be an outcome. Like, you know, my photo thing kind of turned into a, a gig or maybe not. Maybe I'll just go run after school with these girls and like, just have fun. And yeah. so, mm -hmm. yeah, you only have so many hours. Yes, so true. <laughs> um, so as we look at marketing, there's so many different opportunities and so many areas, like you had mentioned, you could focus on content development or maybe you're focusing on graphic design. Um, but if somebody's interested in marketing, what is the best way to start exploring what that salary could look like? So if I'm looking at a career pathway, um, are there different resources out there that I could look at or are there individuals I could talk to? Um, what's out there for resources? Sure. I think um, when you're trying to learn about sal salary ranges, um, especially you know as a when you're applying to those first time positions, sometimes they do you a favor and they post it along with the job description, and that's really handy. But I would say most of the time they don't, um, which is totally <laughs> normal, right? Uh, so, but it's it's valid to try to figure out like, you know, what's the range of these different these different opportunities. Um, I would say the internet can be your friend. You know, there there are going to be some pretty broad broad brush strokes as far as what the ranges are. So you might want to need to hone in on the specific region of the country you're going to live in, or if there's actual city data. Um, you know, maybe refine your internet searches a little bit so you have some more realistic expectations. Um, otherwise, to be honest, I would tell you to reach out to professionals in you know in on a one on one basis. Uh, like if you emailed me, if you're, you're really interested in marketing, you kind of want to know like the range I started at and where I'm at now, I would probably be much more receptive to like sharing that information, you know, through an email exchange, or if you wanted to go grab coffee or do a zoom meeting like this, um, 
because then I can answer because then it gives me a better perspective on why you might be asking, you know, why you might be asking that or kind of what your specific job search situation is. But honestly, I just feel like you could reach out um, to to somebody in that position or in a position that you kind of aspire to and just ask them about their about their career, just kind of like what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably my best advice. Yeah, I think that's great advice, especially tapping into that network. So if you're involved in, in different things and you know somebody that's in marketing, don't be afraid to reach out to them and ask some of those questions. Like you said, but whether it's Zoom or coffee, I think that's a great idea. And so, to be honest, I get so many emails, like, like email me, you know, like people, most of us in marketing are communicators. And I would say that's a huge skill um, that you probably need to bring to the table, whether you are, you know, like I mentioned, whether you're like a dedicated graphic design specialist or print specialist or web specialist, or you're kind of a one man band shop, you probably, if you're at, you have to be a communicator, you probably have to be able to talk to people at some level or um, communicate so I would say send an email, like we are all communicators and we're checking our email. I work out of pocket a lot. So I mean, constantly in my email, it's just how my industry works. Gotta be available all the time. Um, so don't ever be afraid to reach out because what the worst that could happen is I is people just don't answer, right? That's the very worst that can happen. So um, mm -hmm. it, it can't hurt to just reach out and, and try to make that connection. Yeah, absolutely. And at the end of this video and in the comments, we'll include Christina's contact information. Uh, so if you are interested in reaching out or learning more, just having a conversation, we encourage you to do, the, do those things. Um, so we're kind of coming up on our time here, Christina. So I will turn it over to you to share any last thoughts or advice, um, or it, it, maybe it's a random fun fact about you. However, you'd <laughs> like to end your interview and your career spotlight, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Oh boy. That's a lot, man. I have a lot of options here for how to end. Um, I feel like I, I gave, I, I, I think you need to find what's fun. I think that, you know, through all of the places that I've worked, I think what I've kind of come back to is, you know, figuring out what those things are that make you feel passion. And, and you, you kind of have, you have to have that if you are going to uh, work in a field and where you have to market something or someone or some industry, you kind of have to love it because you have to talk about it all the time. So I, I think it's important to kind of know yourself a little bit um, and to know what you bring to the table. Uh, I'd also tell people that, you know, you you need to think about not only what the career title is and the salary. I know those things seem super important from the get-go, but there are other factors when you're career hunting. Um, like how many hours a week do you want to work? Do you want to have to work on the weekends? Um, do you want to have to work holidays? Do you want to have to be at the physical place or do you want to be able to do Zoom or work out of pocket or do you want to travel? There's just a lot of factors. And I think we can get really wrapped up in like the title or how much money you're going to make. Um, and so I would encourage you to, you know, jot down just what are some of those other things that when you think about what you want your life to look like um, as a whole. So career, your outside of your job, um, you know, where you're living, like what are those other things? Because that honestly might really help you figure out and narrow down what you're looking at when you do go out and and start that job search oh, that's what, my a good best way, <laughs> what a good way to end this interview that was so good well thanks so much for joining us christina it has been such a pleasure having you on here today and we really really appreciate you sharing all of this good information again if you are interested in reaching out to christina we will include her contact information thank you so much for being here we will talk to you next time wonderful thank you so much Thanks. Bye.